Hey, you guys. How's things? How have you been? <laughs> I love how um, sometimes in the comments, some people go, I'm good. How are you? You know, like it's, it's fun. Anyway, so I forgot that I was supposed to be kind of working along on video when I just, <laughs> um, I decided I made it an, an, I made an executive decision and, uh, decided that I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do these as my monthly minis for May. Okay. So yeah, so I thought that was, that was a good decision, uh, since I didn't have any ideas anyway. Okay. So I forgot that I was supposed to be sort of working along with you guys. And I did wind up just doing two of these, uh, kind of this size. And, um, if I, if I do wind up finishing these, maybe I'll do these as a, a milestone giveaway. If I, if I have another milestone or maybe even a, just because milestone or maybe free with a purchase of a journal or something, you know, anyway, I will probably finish them. I have so many covers that I've been working on. It's insane, but that's where I always start is with covers. You know, some, that's just, that's just what I, that's what, I mean, you kind of have to really, I mean, if, if you know, to know what you're going to put in it or like what size of paper and stuff, anywho. So I wound up doing a bunch of these little covers. So these are from those collages that we're doing together. And, uh, yeah, so I think I wound up with like 22 of them or something. I experimented with um, using some of the, some fabric washi tape. Um, so, and it works really well. I just wasn't sure that I wanted, this is, this is the only fabric washi tape I have. It's the Tim Holtz stuff. And I didn't, I didn't really want to use that on all of them. And that's really the only fabric washi tape that I have, but it's nice because it's real sturdy and it's super flexible and it's real sticky. So if you happen to have like fabric washi, um, that's great for, for using to build like lightweight little journal covers, you know? So, and then I also was just, just dinking around and I added some book tape, book repair tape, uh, on the corners just to sort of, I don't know. I thought it made them look kind of funky and cool. So, cause I like that, the look of having a corner on the, on the cover. So anyway, so there's that one. Um, and so then I just played around with a couple other ways of doing this. Um, this is actually uh, paper tape. It's like paper medical tape. I got this from, I, Darla sent me this a long time ago and um, I have it in my box of tape. And anyway, so I just used that and, and um, you know, just stuck the two pieces together. There's a spine piece. So I did the one inch spine and then um, I cut all of the the board, the front and back covers. I think they're three and three quarters by whatever that was. I don't remember five, maybe five and a half. Um, so then I just cut little one inch spines out of, uh, the scraps. Okay. So, you know, just, uh, I mean, I could put, I can put one together while we're, while we're chatting. Anyway, I did do a couple of them with that fabric tape on the, or that paper tape on the outside. And I love how this one came out with the word fun right there in the corner. And then it says assemblage right there. Anyway, um, I didn't think that that paper tape was going to be strong enough to, you know, really maintain the cover over time. So I pulled out my handy dandy, um, what's it called? You know, where did it go? Oh, my, um, bandage, my, my old, uh, bandage. And this is the last roll. This is the last roll that I have. So now I have to like try to conserve it. But anyway, so I love using this. It's like my favorite, favorite, favorite thing. And I'm always looking for it. So if anybody has any, they want to, 
they want to share, I'd be happy to buy it from you. Anyway, <laughs> uh, at a reasonable price. So I wound up using that. I had some that was a little bit wider um, that worked. I used up what I had of the wider one, and then I went to the skinnier one. And I didn't do too many with the skinny one. Let's see. And I just used um, a glue stick. I just used the glue stick because I really, I'm going to do some stitching on these and I want to make sure that I catch that, um, the little edge of the fabric when I do like, I'll just do like a straight stitch right there or maybe a zigzag. I don't know. Um, just to catch it. But I think I'm also going to spray these covers uh, with a, like a clear coat. And I think since I have a ton of, um, the gloss clear coat, I might do that. And if, and when I do that, I promise you guys that I will, um, I will show you what kind I used. So, okay. So these ones where I just used the paper tape on there, I think I am going to add some fabric over the top of that just so I feel more confident that it's going to, it's going to stay, that's going to stay. So, um, and this is the only piece I had left where I thought I could sort of demonstrate, you know, what I did. Um, I know that most of you guys are not going to have this. So, um, this is actually, um, the same type of bandage, but it's much, much wider, you know? So, um, but that you have to cut it and stuff. So that's fine. But here's the thing is on Amazon, they have this extra fine cheesecloth that is literally like almost the exact same weight as, as this bandage. So, so I buy this. I can link this in the description also. So you guys, sometimes, um, I forget to put links and, uh, I appreciate you asking if if I would add a link in the description for products or whatever I've used. And if I do that, just um, what I think I should do is just add it to the description rather than adding it as a comment or a reply to your comment. So if you've asked me to add links to products in the description, um, I will reply to your comment and I'll just say see, see, uh, see description. Okay. So that way everybody can see it. So it, it might not be as a reply to your comment, but, but I'll add it. Um, so anyway, you could use something like this. This is, um, I think it comes in like three yards or five yards or something. And it's pretty wide. Like this is, uh, four layers, you know, so it's folded in half and then in half again. So you get quite a bit and I just love it. It's really fun to coffee diet or avocado diet or whatever, or, you know, just regular cheesecloth. Um, you could totally use that. If you're going to use regular cheesecloth, I would say maybe do two layers. And what I think I'm going to do actually is add a layer of cheesecloth onto all of these anyway, you know, at least on the outside, maybe not on the inside, but, but on the outside for sure. Okay. So just kind of lay these out, you know, how I want them. I try to make sure that any writing is right side up because it drives me crazy if it's not. So I want there to be some kind of interest, you know what I mean? Um, because I mean, I don't know for sure if you'll see this, this piece through the, the fabric, but you know, in case you, in case you do, I like to, um, I like to, uh, make sure it's what I want you to see anyway, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'll take the little spine piece and I'm just going to add some of this, some of this here glue stick and try to center it as best as I can, just eyeballing it, press it down. And then this is the back cover. So this is going to be the outside of the back cover. And I'm just going to add some of this, this here glue stick right on the very edge and then I'm giving it just a teeny bit of a gap, like, I don't know, maybe a 16th of an inch or so of, of a little gap. Okay. Just to see what I'm saying. 
um, <clears throat> just so that it has the ability to, to move a little bit. Do the same thing on this side. I like this one. So this one will be like a really small one. Um, and just give it like an eighth of an inch or so. Press it down. And then I just take the glue and do both sides or, you know, do the spine and both sides. And then I just pull this down, fold it over, and sort of press it on. Easy peasy. And, you know, even if this isn't how you want to wind up doing the, the cover, ultimately, like say if you want to add some other fabric or something, this is a good way to just sort of hold it in place, too, for, you know... Um, while you're while you're working on it or doing something else with the cover so anyways <clears throat> i just wanted to show that to you guys that's that's basically how i put all of those together um and then like i said i think i'm gonna add a little bit of cheesecloth so i'm gonna try to fold this so it's relatively straight on on the end and then uh just cut myself some strips doesn't have to be perfect right just cut some little strip I mean I was totally crooked but whatever um and then this glue stick does actually hold this pretty well so um but like I said I'm not gonna be totally relying on this um cheesecloth and stuff to to hold my binding forever and I'm not stretching this out. I'm sort of just leaving it sort of crunched up a little bit and just, just press it down. And that sort of gives it a little bit of additional texture and stuff. Let me turn this one over there like that. I'm just going to let it kind of land however you know if it's this all you know go ahead and add a little bit more so yeah so that's that's what i think i'm going to do on the rest of these covers is just add another layer of the regular cheesecloth so i've got like this is this is regular cheesecloth okay so it's like the larger weave um, and some cheesecloth is an even larger weave than that, right? Like this is actually somewhat fine also. Um, see, it's different. Like this is much more textured than, than this one. So anywho, or you could get yourself some vintage uh, bandage and use that. Okay, so that's what I'm doing on the covers. And... I've been sort of going around and around about um, how I want to treat these, how I want to treat these covers. And I think I'm loving using uh, book plates lately. It's just been, I don't know, just something I'm, I'm sort of into right now. And so on my scan and cut, I have an older scan and cut and I don't really use it very often at all, but it does have this book plate cut file that's built in. So I like this and you can resize it. I think this is the smallest that it'll go. Um, but I cut a bunch of these out of uh, watercolor paper last night. So <clears throat> I thought that, I thought that would work pretty well. And, and I was thinking I, I would just paint them like I did these and, and even use the, the Gilder's wax on, on them. But while I was, while I was looking at the patterns on the scan and cut, um, I saw this one and I thought, well, that's pretty cool. That's just like a, um, like a slide, you know, except for it has those holes and those would be great to do with um, maybe a piece of acetate 
and then some type of image behind it could even make it like a little pocket, right? Like, <clears throat> so I think what I'm going to do is paint these and then add a piece of acetate and then I'll just do some kind of little, some kind of little image, like a little mini collage on the front cover and then, um, and then attach that or something. I don't know. I might wind up just, I'm not sure what I'm going to do exactly, but just so you guys know, that's kind of where I'm headed. Um, I think, I think, <laughs> um, I did a bunch of fussy cutting. I cut out a bunch of little, uh, little tiny images, mostly mushrooms and, um, mushrooms and flowers. And then I remembered that I have this whole box of, uh, color slides. And these are all the ones that are on like chipboard. So they're not the plastic ones. And they're cool because you can just pop out the, um, the, the film and you've got a nice little frame that you could do all kinds of stuff with, you know? So I, I don't know, like I might use some of these also and then, um, you know, punch holes in the corners like these are, I don't know who knows what could happen. And those could, those could maybe be used inside the journals too. So if you happen to have some of those, some of those little slide uh, frames, those would work. Um, or there's tons of paper punches that, you know, you can punch out book plates, right? All different, all different kinds. But then I thought, okay, well, even easier if you have paper punches, you could easily cut a square with your paper trimmer. And then if you have a square paper punch, you could just punch out that, that center, you know, or you could do it in a shape like a heart or whatever, you know? Um, but it's kind of fun to do it on watercolor paper on real heavy watercolor paper, because I think it, it sort of simulates the, um, simulates these. So anywho, um, yeah, so that's what I'm planning to do. So now I'm like, I'm not sure if I should spray these um, before I add either this or one of these, you know, just not sure. So I'm sort of going around and around about that. Um, yeah, so I don't know. But in the meantime... I thought it would be kind of fun to work on some pockets and I'll just kind of let this stew in my head and, and see where, see where I want to take that. So I do want to do some pockets in these. And <clears throat> since I kind of started on working on a couple of, a couple pockets uh, yesterday when I was showing you guys the, um, the digital uh, collections, the collage collections that I have in my Etsy. I thought, well, you know what? You printed all that stuff. You might as well use it, you know? So, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just take a bunch of uh, library pockets and you know what? If you guys, if anybody wants some of these, like say you don't want to buy a box of 500 of them, um, send me an email and I could actually do like a, um, I was thinking about doing this, like a, like a, um, like a set of them. So, so like, I don't know, like, like 10 of each one, you know, of the three. So, um, and I was thinking, I don't know, like eight or $10 or something like that. Or, you know, I, I don't know. I have to, I have to look at what I paid for the, the pockets, but, um, but that would definitely, I would be able to ship that first class. So, um, and then I could also actually add like 10 of these little craft uh, coin envelopes too. So I don't really want to put them in my Etsy shop. It's just kind of a hassle, but not that it, it's not a hassle. It's just, I hate making listing <laughs> anyway. So I want to make some pockets and I'm just going to use some of these little collage pages that 
that I have and then just add some other little little images and stuff to them so I'll pull out my box of labels that I've that I've done and a bunch of those little images that I was cutting out um, and I wanted to also use up some scraps of things that I've had from other projects too on on some of these some of these little covers you know so anyway sorry if I'm just kind of like frazzled you guys and all over the place but that's just kind of how I am the last the last few days I'm, I'm not trying to freak anybody out but <clears throat> I I actually am feeling sick like I have a cold and um, please don't like panic or anything um, I haven't had a fever I'm just uh, just not I'm feeling like I have a cold like like a head cold and you know anyway <clears throat> so I've got all these these little images that I want to try to add onto these pockets and then oh and I have my little teeny tiny ones in here and this has all the little um, little images that I've torn out of like illustrated dictionaries so anyway so that's what I'm working with and then I thought a lot of these little tiny a lot of these little tiny images I could use as a little collage on the front you know maybe for for this so who knows who knows um, but anyway I thought the easiest way to do this would be to actually measure them and they are two and a half inches deep by three and a half inches lo uh, long. Actually, it's a little bit shy of three and a half inches. So I figured the best thing to do would be to just cut, cut paper to that size and then I don't have to worry about really trimming it all that much. So let's go. Oh, I need to trim off the little, the white, the white border. I forgot to print these uh, borderless. So I'll trim that off. And somebody commented uh, yesterday about my horrible safety habits with the guillotine paper trimmer. And I'm really sorry. You're absolutely right. I shouldn't put my arm under it um, because it is sharp and I certainly don't want to cut my arm off. So since I know that's just a little bit shy of three and a half, I'm going to go a little shy of three and a half. Let me cut a couple of those. One more. And then it was two and a half tall. So two and a half. And to me, this these collage pages are sort of just like, I don't know, just like scrapbook paper that you can customize. You know, that's sort of how I've been looking at it. Like, and there's no reason that you couldn't, you know, take, and I thought about this and I should have said this yesterday when I put out that video that, you know, if you want, you could, you could print off these collage bases and add your own ephemera and stuff to them and then scan those, you know, there's no reason that you couldn't do that. If, you know, if you want to be able to reuse whatever you do on top of this too, you know, I would ask that you, um, not put that up for sale necessarily, but, um, but I thought that was worth, worth mentioning as an idea too. So, um, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and use the art glitter glue to glue these on just because it's, 
easier and it's sort of neater not as messy whoops a big glob on there so yeah i think this would be a good way to use up a bunch of little scraps too on a bunch of pockets and just kind of collage them on top of that collage paper you know and there's so many collage digital collage bases on on etsy you know if you didn't if you don't have this one you know you, there's there's lots of them out there you know so yeah and even just like that i think it looks super nice way easy with the with the art glitter glue and it doesn't seem to wrinkle the paper either which is nice Okay, so I'll just, I'm gonna, let me do one more and then um, we'll see about just embellishing a couple of them. And then I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna, how I'm gonna put these in. I'd like to do two pockets for each journal. So I normally, when I use these little library pockets, I normally will do a little row of stitching around the very, very edge of these, just because I think it looks nice. Um, and then glue them in to the covers. But I also like the idea of you like I'll just go right there like the whole thing is just all collaged out you know um so I want to put these on the inside cover whoops that was a, the wrong side so just put it right here and then since I am going to do some stitching on the cover itself it makes sense to just stitch this in while I'm while I'm doing that you know but I don't know it depends just depends just have to play around with it and see if i like it when they're just when they're glued in or if i want them to be um, stitched in so anyway options options so i will cut up a whole bunch more of those uh collage pages and um And just basically cover these uh, cover these little pockets so since I came across the mother load of cool old old stamps I want to use some of these I'm kind of like smearing a little bit of glue around the edge too. Some glue or some stamps and then how about, let's see. Yeah. Oh no, let's use this one. Let's use this guy. 17 year locust. This is the same thing I was doing yesterday. Not nothing, nothing different, right? Um, I could do some of those ones with the flaps too. And I think I'm just going to fold that over. 
think I'm just going to fold that over instead of cutting it off. Um, and then maybe a little, oh, let's use one of these, one of these little guys. Instead of a label, let's use this little price tag. Just kind of layer them up. I could do a little bit of fabric on it, maybe too, but eh, I don't know. Anyway, so I thought that looks that looks pretty cool. Simple. I like the colors in the in the beetle with the with the you know the background. Um, let's do. <laughs> I love these stamps. I mean, even just one, just, just gluing a stamp on here would be plenty, I think. I think that would be plenty, but I really want to sort of jazz these up. You know what I mean? Could add a little flower. Oh my gosh. And I have all of these, those newer Tim Holtz, um, die cuts are nice because they're a lot thinner than, than they've been in the past, right? With his other sets. And I really like them. So maybe a butterfly, just do a butterfly on there. I need to zoom in. I always do that. Yeah. I think it needs some ink though. Sort of gets lost. If you feel like something is just getting lost on the page and you're not, you know, like if it's hard to see the, you know, the definition of its edges, a little bit of ink always makes a big difference. I'm going to use the art glitter glue on this. So yeah, I guess I'm just making embellishments now. And I I am going to use more of those uh more of the scraps the strips and stuff from from the covers. I'll do some other stuff with those too. I think this needs a little teeny label. Okay, maybe a bigger label. How about a label? Hmm. I think just over the butterfly even would be fine. And since this is a little bit thinner paper, I'll use the glue stick. I don't know. I just think it it's like it just it's cutting out some work using those those collage pages. So, and since I printed them, I might as well use them, right? So, I don't know. What do you guys think? They're just, you know, they're pretty basic, kind of kind of plain and and simple, but you know, they get the job done. And I'm also using some of my stamps. So, that's cool. You could add all kinds of different things on these tickets and tickets and all different labels and images and whatever. Let's see. I want to use a mushroom. I have these two little half of a flower. No. Yeah, I cut out a whole bunch of mushrooms. I'm going to do a label. 
I think this is one of Tracy's labels. Yep, and it's on sticker paper. I printed these on sticker paper. So I'm going to put the label down here. And then I'm going to do this. I don't know if I like that one. Hold on. Hold the phone. Oh, that one's kind of cool. It's too big. No, that one's too red. Mm, let's see. Well, there's always the little Tim Holtz mushrooms. <laughs> Some of these are so cool because they're just dinky. Those little dinky ones. And I'm not sure what, so I think that that set of these die cuts, I don't remember um, the name of them, but I did get them on Amazon. So I'll link those in the description also. I'm sure you can probably get them at the craft stores too, but, but it's neat because they are in two different sizes. Okay. Like they're the same images, but and one is like regular size and then one is like minis, like miniature ones. So I love that because I love um, using them for like um, charms and stuff. And they're nice. They're thinner. They're much thinner. I don't, I didn't ever really like the other die cuts that he does because, because they're so thick. And they just feel, I don't know, they just feel too bulky. So, anyway, I think that looks pretty cool. The little mushroomy pocket. I'm just loving mushrooms lately. Anyway, so that's what I think I'm going to do. I'm just going to make up a whole bunch of these little pockets. Use a bunch of these um, collage bases. Like I said, I, I printed all of them out probably a couple times and, um, yeah, and use them up. And I think I will probably use some of these would be great also to use as pages in some of these journals, I think, because that just gives, um, whoever buys the journal, if somebody buys the journal, I should say, it gives them sort of a base to do their own collaging on also. So Anyway, um, I'm going to quit harping about it, but, um, but yeah, hmm. anyway, so I will do a little, um, just a little straight stitch around the edge of this. I might add a tab or something, but I kind of don't think I will because these covers are, there isn't really room. Yeah. There's not really room. So yeah. And you know, you could even, you can even do these these little library pockets sideways like that. Like they don't always have to go this way, you know? Um, I think they would even be cool on the, on the front cover, you know? <clears throat> so anywho, so that's where I'm at. I got all my covers done and now I'm just working on some embellishments. I might also add some little, um, like may try and make some clusters, some little fabric and paper clusters, like, like I used to do all the time and, um, you know, see about maybe adding one of those on the cover or somewhere in the journal. So anyways, sorry, I'm sort of, sort of out of it, you guys, but I do want to keep working on these because I'm really enjoying it. I think they're really fun, but I didn't want to get too far ahead um, before I made another video. So, cause I kind of like doing a little series with you guys. It's fun anyway. So let me know how you guys are doing. And if you're still playing along and you know, if you have ideas about the, um, about the little book plates or the, the slide frames, you know, if you have some of those and send me an email, if you would like, um, a bundle of, of the, um, the library pockets. So yeah, I'm totally, 
totally happy to do that. Never in a million years will I use all of those library pockets. So I'll, I don't know how many I can do, but if I can do it, I will. Okay. All right, guys. Love you. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.